The sale of counterfeit goods, mostly from China, are becoming as profitable to Asian gangs as illegal drug trafficking. I'm Deborah Khan. Joining me now is reporter Caroline Henshaw from Sydney. Okay, Caroline, um, I know that goods include everything from shoes to handbags, but I want to talk about the um, illegal trade in pharmaceuticals. How, how much is, is this trade growing? Well, that's a very difficult one to uh, to actually break down, you see. Um, definitely, when I spoke to the UN yesterday, they said that it was rapidly rising, but putting a real figure on this stuff is incredibly hard. Um, if you think about goods in general, uh, everything from shoes to handbags, they reckon that they own that the ports and customs officials in places like the US and Europe only stop maybe 1.25% of the amount of illegal goods that are actually coming into the country. So when you start talking about pharmaceutical goods, we're talking about things that can be bought on the internet, that are small, that can be shipped in envelopes even. It's much, much harder to put a figure on it. I mean, the OECD has done research in the past that estimates about 2% of all trade flows are counterfeit goods. So if we apply that, we're certainly talking in the billions. Okay, and when we say counterfeit drugs, what exactly do we mean? Are these um, copycats of um, phar pharmaceuticals that are on the market that are being produced for a cheaper cost, or are they medicines that, that really just don't work and, and could potentially be dangerous for um, human consumption? Well, this covers sort of a multitude of sins. At one end of the spectrum, um, you have people in, in parts of Asia who are buying um, products supposedly to, to help against particular problems which actually just may not have any use at all. So um, they found in Southeast Asia, for example, up to 90% of some of the products being sold as anti-malarials simply do nothing. And the problem with that is you, you also have products which are maybe do a bit but not quite enough. And so actually malaria, a lot of strains of malaria are becoming increasingly resistant to, to uh, pharmaceutical products because of that problem. So that's one part of the issue. Then you also have problems problems like, um, like fake fake goods themselves, so fake branded goods. So you go to a website online, you think you're buying um, goods from, from one of the major companies that you can trust when actually it's just fake and it's being made in, in an unregulated factory somewhere. And I was actually speaking to, to Pfizer, one of the world's biggest um, chemi uh, pharmaceutical companies yesterday, and they were telling me that um, since 2004 when they set up this, this massive kind of anti-fake, anti-counterfeit product um, uh, excuse me, one second. Well, um, Anti-counterfeit product um, launch. They've they've um, stopped. You know, more than 80 million um, fake doses of of their uh, of their products. Um, and in those, they've managed to find you know really quite dangerous goods. Sometimes even rat poison, uh, brick dust, um, lead-based paint, even. So th these are goods that you don't want to be buying. And you you know, especially if you think that you're spending money on reputable goods, you don't want to be spending your money on something that could protect, potentially cause you harm. Okay, and then how, I mean, if, if a lot of them are being indeed sold online, how can authorities crack down on this trade? I mean, you know, anyone can go onto the internet and really order anything. So where are the checks and balances in the process and, and how are authorities dealing with it? It's a difficult one, as I say. Um, one of the points the UN made at the, the release of this report yesterday is, is that they hope that by putting this information out into the public domain, they will encourage authorities to work together more. And the only way that people will be able to stop this kind of problem is, is if authorities from countries where items are made and where they're bought and through transition markets, people really work together to try and stop this. Um, certainly, uh, countries countries like the US and Europe, um, port authorities have been cracking down on trying to stop goods coming in, inspecting a lot more goods. Um, in some of the higher value industries, um, they're also putting particularly electronic tags on things that, that make it harder for, for counterfeiters to ship products because it, it shows that they're um, that where the goods have come from and they can be electronically, electronically traced a lot more easily. So those kind of issues, um, uh, those kind of uh, issues that, that are being addressed through these new initiatives, but um, I think that one of the points the UN made very clear was that these are these are difficult problems to solve, and because the criminal gangs often will have um, a finger in every pie if you squeeze on one particular market or one particular commodity, they will be able to shift very easily to start making profits elsewhere. Okay, thanks very much. Reporter Caroline Henshaw joining us from Sydney. For more on Caroline's story on the illegal uh, counterfeit goods trade, you could go to WSJ.com. I'm Deborah Kahn.